Hello everyone. We can use the Fourier series in system analysis. In this case, if I have a system and the system is described by its transfer function h of s or the frequency response h of j omega, and I have an input that is exponential, what is the output? Well, it will be the system response to this frequency, omega zero. So that will be this. So this could be a filter. How is it responding to omega zero? Omega zero could be two pi 1000 and time the input signal. So this system, all it does, it will either amplify or attenuate the input signal. Now, if I have any periodic signal, like the recording of the vowel E or I or O, so I can express it in the exponential Fourier series this way. And this signal is going to this system, and I want to know what's the output. The output will be exactly the input, which is in this case this and the summation, multiply by the system response to the different harmonic present in the signal. That means the system response, when n0, that's the DC. When n1, the first harmonic, how does it respond to the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic? And that will be this term here. That's the system response. So the output going to be exactly the input, which is the summation and these amplified or attenuated by the system response to the different harmonics. So we can use the Fourier series to analyze the system response. Let us analyze the DC power supply using the Fourier series a DC power supply, the input usually AC signal, and you need to convert it to a DC voltage or a DC signal. In this problem, the DC power supply is these two subsystems. The voltage or the input at this node, let's call it X of S of T, the source. And let's call the voltage at this node X of T. And this is our voltage output y of t and we need to know what is the voltage at y of t if the source is a sinusoidal sine t so let's move here and plot the source signal so that is sine t omega source is just one so the period and Ts will be 2 pi. So this is now the output here. The full wave rectifier basically will convert negative value to positive value. So x of t will be this signal. Now this signal is a periodic with a period t0 and t0 it's half Ts, and that is x of t. In this side, it's just the same as this one. In order to find y of t, we need to find x of t. So we're going to use the Fourier series analysis to find what are the frequency component of x of t, and then we see how this subsystem, which is like a filter, gonna respond to the to the different frequency component present in x of t. So let's do the Fourier series analysis to find x of t. So we're gonna use dn equal 1 over t0. We're gonna use the definition, the integral over a full period of the signal x of t e minus j n omega 0 t dt where omega 0 is the fundamental frequency 2 pi t 0 i will not plug value for omega 0 and t 0 i will keep it as it is t 0 and the integral from 0 to a full period t 0 of the signal x of t well the signal x of t in this part is just the same as this one so that is just sine t e minus j n omega 0 t 
dt. To integrate these, I'm not going to use the u substitution and all these kind of technique we learned in calculus. I will just use this property, integral formula. So if I equate the integral I want to do to e a x sine b x, it will be as follows. B in this case will be 1. A in this case will be the whole thing without the t. This is A. So the integral of this one will be 1 over t0 e minus a. So that e a. So that will be e minus j n omega 0 t divided by 1 minus a squared. So when you square the a, that will be minus time minus plus j time j minus. So you get minus n omega 0 squared time minus j n omega 0 sine b, which is 1 t minus cosine t evaluated from 0 to t0. If you plug for t, evaluate t0 minus, then evaluate the whole term here for t0, you should get this one. 1 over t0, 1 minus n omega 0 square minus j n omega 0 sine t0 minus cosine t0 plus 1. If I plug for t0 its value here, t0, ts, we found it to be 2 pi over 2, so that is pi. So if I plug for t0 pi, then dn will be 1 over pi 1 minus n omega 0 square. So that's this part. When you plug for t0 pi, sine pi is 0, so you get 0 here, minus, you plug for t0 pi, cosine pi is minus 1, minus 1 time minus, you get plus 1, plus 1. So then this term will be 2 over pi 1 minus n omega 0 square. And that's the n. So for this periodic signal, that will go to the filter. The n is this one. It has a DC component. If you plug for n0, you will get D0. And that will be 2 over pi. And if you plug for n1, you will get the first harmonic, which is omega 0, n2, the second harmonic, 2, two omega 0, 3 omega 0, and so forth. If I want to express x of t in the exponential Fourier series, it will be x of t equal the summation n goes from minus infinity to infinity of dn, which is 2 over pi 1 minus n omega 0 to e j n omega 0 t. And that's the signal x of t. If you write this code in MATLAB and you plot it, you will get this signal. The strength of the different harmonic is this, dn. So we found x of t. We found the frequency component. If I plug for omega 0, oh sorry, this is 2 pi over t0. Now, if I plug for t0 pi, then omega 0 will be 2 pi over pi, which is 2, 2 radians per second. So that's the fundamental. So the fundamental frequency here is 2 radians per second. That can the next harmonic will be 2 times 2 is 4 radians per second. And this will be 6 radians per second. If you want to find it in hertz, divide by 2 pi.
if I divide this by 2 pi, then that will give me the frequency in Hertz. So we found X of T and the frequency component. Now what's the next step? The next step, after we found X of T here, now we need to find the frequency response of the system. And we're going to use the voltage divider rule. Then the voltage divider rule, what does it say? The output across this element equal the input, which is x of t, time the impedance of this element divided by the sum of the impedance of this and this one. And the impedance of a capacitor, remember, is 1 over j omega c, and the impedance of a resistor is r. So if we use this voltage divider rule, for this system then the output y of omega equal the input x of omega times the impedance of the capacitor divided by the total impedance which is r plus 1 over j omega c if i divide this side and this side by x of omega i get h of omega so h of omega equal y of omega divided by x of omega 1 over j omega c divided by r plus 1 over j omega c and i can multiply numerator by j omega c and denominator and simplify the frequency response of the system so when you multiply this by j omega c you get this term you multiply this by j omega c you get the one okay so this is the frequency response of the system so I found x of t, it go to this second subsystem, h of omega, and now I need to find y of omega or y of t. Well, the output will be exactly the input, but each frequency component in x of t will be attenuated or amplified, will be processed by h of omega. Since I already expressed this in the exponential Fourier series, I know all the frequency component of x of t. So y of t will be the input, which is this, n from minus infinity to infinity, 2 over pi, 1 minus n omega 0 square, ej n omega 0 t. And each frequency, each harmonic or frequency component in this signal will be processed by this system. So that means H of omega, which is this one, will process the DC when N is 0. The first harmonic when N is 1, so that's the next frequency. The next frequency is 2 omega 0, 3 omega 0, so be, and the N omega 0. So how does this system process this input? It will be plug for omega here, the different frequency component in this signal, n omega zero. So that will be one over one plus j omega. Now, omega here is continuous, can have any value. But for x of t, this input, it doesn't have infinite different value of frequencies. It has only harmonics. So then for omega, I will plug n omega 0. Those are the possible frequency in x of t, since it's periodic, rc. And that's the output. So this is the output of this filter. If I plot this y of t, it will look something like this. The dc will be this average here. That will be d0. If I want to know what is d0 for the output, I just plug here for n0. If I plug for n0 here, I will get 1 over 1 plus 0 time. If I plug for n here 0, I will get 2 over pi 1 minus 0. So this is just 2 over pi. So that's the DC. And this is the repulse. What is the power 
of the DC and the power of the ripples. The power of the DC is square D0. It's just 2 over pi square. So that's 4 over pi square. Now to find the power of the ripples, I need to find the magnitude of dn. So that means I need to find the magnitude of this term. The magnitude will be d n will be the magnitude first of this part. So that will be 1 over square root 1 plus the imaginary square n omega 0 rc square time this term. Well, this term has no j, so it's just going to be the same. And if I need to find the power of the ripples, it's power of the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonics. And we found this to be to the summation of all harmonics to infinity. To summation of squaring this. So that will be 1 over 1 plus n omega 0 rc square time 4 over pi square 1 minus n omega 0 square. And we can use a computer to calculate this summation for n infinity. And if you do that, you will find the power of the ripples 0.0025. This ripples is undesirable, but it depends on your system that use the power supply. It may tolerate these ripples. But if I need to find what is the percentage of the power of the ripples to the power of the DC that we want, then I will divide the power of the ripple by the power of the DC multiplied by 100 and that will comes the power of the ripples equal only 0.61% of the power of the DC. So really it's a small fraction. And this is a lab exercise you will be doing. So in the lab, actually you will do simulation using MATLAB or multi-sims to simulate this system and see if the output will come exactly like the analysis we did here and then you will build the actual power dc and see also measure the output using the oscilloscope function generator and see if it match the analysis here and if you use this matlab code here it will do the plot of these ripples and calculate the power of the ripples and you can plot y of t using these equations. And this is the code here. That concludes chapter 6 of the Fourier series analysis of signals and system. Thank you.